Sup, you've reached Clarissa. I'm out somewhere being da bomb and can't answer. My bad. <laughs> Leave me your name number and a sweet message and I'll hit you up later. Peace. Hey, it's Amelia. And Sherrick. You told us to call and let you know what we're doing. We're, we get your voicemail almost every week at this point. Oh, well, I guess we'll leave you a message about what we're up to and our pop culture thoughts of the week, and hopefully we'll hear back from you soon. It's like we have a podcast, in fact, the only podcast, that would dare wish you happy Jinko de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Is that offensive? It feels offensive. <laughs> it's, it's the Jinko jeans. Oh! <laughs> oh, Jinkos. <laughs> Happy Jinko Jeans de Mayo. <laughs> Should have said that. Jeans of May. <laughs> yes, happy Jeans of May. Wide legged, uh, high waisted Jeans of May. Oh, God. I still think I have some unofficial and, yeah, unofficial Jinko jeans. Oh, God. They're... Those aren't one of the pair that Jenny cut up. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Shout out to Jenny for that amazing work. Uh, I, I, she'll probably, this is probably the first time she's going to hear it, but I, uh, and I think, I don't know if I was tell, talking to you about this, but I just have a lot of clothes that like either don't fit anymore, but, or, or like, I'm like, okay, well, I'm probably never going to wear this shirt anymore, but I do have value with it. AKA the last time that I said something like this and Jenny's like, I could just make it a quilt. And then she ended up making two quilts. Um, there may, <laughs> there may be need for a third. <laughs> At this point. Uh, or, but, or we need to do some work. I mean, not or, and we need to do some work. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not an or. It's not no, an or, it's I, an and. I just, I meant like some decluttering mindset. Oh, no, no, I know what you meant. I know exactly what okay. you meant. My, my statement still stands. Because <laughs> there are some clothes that like, I wouldn't want to be in a quilt. I just need to get around to going through them and like going, okay, well, I'm never going to wear this again. It's got to go, you know, like, but I know that there's probably enough shirts that like I could cut into a quilt that like, because they are, they are things that I do. Like, for instance, this is going to be a great segue into it. Cause we're going to kind of forego the, Hey, how was your week thing? Cause we're about to tell you about how our week was, um, yeah. uh, my, my, my iconic shirt. Like the shirt that I have for the, mm-hmm. the Iconics doesn't quite mm-hmm. fit anymore, but I really like them, obviously, for reasons I'll get into later. And mm-hmm. I don't necessarily want to get rid of that shirt. So, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, the uh, surprise. Here's the thing that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, Amelia and I went to C2E2 in Chicago, 2024. It's at the end of April. It was a fantastic time. Mm-hmm. Had by most, not necessarily all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of people there. I saw, um, not just like people that I didn't know because there were a lot of people there in general, but I saw a lot of people that I did know there. Mm -hmm. Some fantastic art and artists. I didn't do any panels this year personally, but we'll, we'll kind of, you know, explain the whole situation. So, yeah. So I guess we'll kind of just start uh, in some sort of chronological order and we'll jump around as we are wont to do, um, with you, Amelia, because I think you started technically... When did your flight leave? Oh, my flight left on Friday at one something. Oh, so in the I, afternoon? Okay. Yeah. I didn't I don't know why I thought you were out like way earlier than that. No, no, no. Uh last year I did. Last mm. year I was super early. This year I decided that all like all the stuff I wanted to do was on Saturday and Sunday. And so I was like, well, if it's going to be a later day on Sunday, I can make it a later day on Friday. Like there's no reason to get there super early on Friday. For Yeah. And I'm glad I did that um, because yeah. So you guys, I think were already there by the time I even left for the airport. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we were. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I flew at like one something, one fifty. I don't know, and I got there at like two thirty. Also, must not have been one fifty. It must have been like one fifteen or something. I feel like I got there at like two thirty ish or something, and I wasn't sure how I wanted to. 
get there and I did not realize how far away O'Hare is um from downtown uh so not doing that again I think um and that like because it was rush hour essentially by the time I got my bag and whatever so it was like it's gonna take longer to drive like to get a taxi or something or an uber because of rush hour traffic than it would be to just take the l which Mm -hmm. for those who don't know is their elevated train although it's also sometimes underground like a subway so (laughs) but that's where the l comes from and so i was like okay i'm gonna do it and normally to and from an airport i like to just get like a cab or an uber or something because of then I'm not carrying my suitcase, like mm-hmm. dragging it around on a bus or a, or a subway or whatever. But I was like, mm, do I want to spend $60 on a cab that'll take longer? Or do I want to spend $5 on the subway that will take less time? Kind of feels like a no-brainer. So I did that, but it was two subways to get to the hotel and then walking like two or three blocks it wasn't that far um but it was raining so by the time i got to the hotel i was like tired and had been in the rain and it was like 5 30 almost and the floor closes at seven and so when i texted you like hey i'm at the at the hotel finally and dustin was like are you gonna come to the con today or not and i was like Maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) Part of me was like, like, I know you feel this way about it of like, I paid to go to this thing. I want to like spend as much time as I can there and whatever. And so there's a part of me that was like, I probably, maybe I should go because like I paid for the three days. This is what I'm here for. But then I was like, okay, but by the time I get on the bus, and get to the convention center it's gonna be like after six so i'll have an hour and i'm already tired and kind of peopled out Mm -hmm. which was terrifying to me at the in the moment because i was like shit if i'm overstimulated now Mm -hmm. the fuck is this weekend gonna be like but i think it was actually really good that i didn't go because by the next morning i was fine yeah so, um, so yeah, I just hung out in the hotel room by myself for a while until this guy showed up. Yeah, and it was me. Dustin, and I left the hotel room to get Shake Shack. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So for but us, that was my Friday. <laughs> yeah, so for us, we left. Uh, Dustin and I left. Oh, Dustin. So it was, uh, the, the, everyone else that, that was in the group was myself, my buddy Dustin, our friend Nico, his brother Frank, and our friend Jackie. So we basically kind of all oh, piled Frank is in. His brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I was trying to explain to friends of the podcast, Amber, like who knew who. Okay. And I was like, it's it's like a chain, like <laughs> Dustin as the linchpin, essentially. That's funny. And no. I was like, I think Nico must be like an old friend of Dustin's. That was the impression I got. And then I was like, and Jackie's his girlfriend, and Frank is. Jackie is not actually, as oh. far as I know. Oh, okay. Um, Just a friend. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I never check into the dynamics of the the room because it's usually like Frank, Nico, and Jackie kind of stay in that room. One year we mm. had a friend instead of Jackie, our friend Anthony came along. Mm. And again, I don't check into the dynamics of how that works out in their in their situation. But so yeah, so gotcha. so yeah, they're yeah. So so Frank is is Nico's older brother, one of Freak, Nico's older brothers, and he's very okay, quiet. Well, Jackie is is their girl base friend. Yes, correct. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. So yeah, so so um, we left here. I want to say close to like nine thirty in the morning, which means because normally we would leave maybe like ten thirty, eleven, maybe sometimes even close to noon. Mm-hmm. So we would get there like one or two, and then we'd just be like, "Well, 
we're going to try and catch as much as we can. The floor stays open a little bit later than like your Gen Con does. Cause like Gen Con, it's like 5 PM. The floor kind of closes, Ugh. but no, this time we wanted to, to get down there early. And so we got down there early, but not, excuse me, not too early because they, the rooms were ready for us. And they were in, they were first time that I've been down there. We were in adjacent rooms. Usually there's like maybe like three or four rooms in between us. Oh, um, interesting. I think the I think the last year that yeah you, you weren't you weren't in the hotel with us last year but like no. the last time it was like there was at least maybe one or two rooms in between they weren't or maybe if they were close together they just weren't adjoined. Yeah, I wonder been, if like, they were next called. door but like they weren't adjoined. Yeah, I feel like you have to like I don't. Call yeah, like, I don't hey, think do he join? did because mm-hmm. he seemed kind of surprised by it when they said oh. like oh the rooms are adjoining so. Okay. So that was the first for us, but so we got down there early and then Dustin had to peel off because he uh, didn't order his ticket in time for it to be Mm -hmm. mailed out. So, Mm -hmm. uh, which I was like, yeah, this is why I'm going to do this forever now because it gets to me. And then as long as I make sure that it's in my luggage, I can literally just walk in, go through security and then I don't have to wait. uh, Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was so great because last year, yeah, I decided I, to go like, pretty last minute. So, yeah, I had to do the same thing. Yeah. And I think I, I ended up waiting too long to get my badge as well. So I had to go and it wasn't it wasn't nightmarish, but it was like, oh, I it could. Just this was, is it just it's, 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 it's just hassle. Yeah, it's just hassle. Yeah. So. So we got down there and then basically we lost Dustin immediately because he had to go to Will Call to get his ticket, his mm-hmm. badge. And so it was myself and Jackie and Frank. And then I was like, well, I've uh, I just like threw on my cool uh, Chemion color glasses the first time that I had those with me. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know, I'm fucking extra in public 90 percent of the time. And I'm happy that 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 is a fact <laughs> about me. So I had these like in Chemion well so because like i will have like novelty shit with me like uh something that okay. i want to show off like for okay. example the chemion glasses so they are glasses I don't that know they're what that means yeah so they're so they're basically those glasses that i have that have the animation on them chemion oh, is the brand oh okay <laughs> chemion is the brand so um you can basically create animations on uh the glasses and it's really cool so so I had those like almost right away to kind of show off a little bit. So I was walking around and like occasionally seeing people like catch my eyes and do like a double take. They're like, whoa, those are cool, you know. Uh-huh. And then uh, I'm trying to remember like how exactly Friday went because like I don't think I ran back into. Did Dustin and I come in at the same time? I think Dustin left the floor early on Friday. No. You guys came back on Friday together. You went. Oh, to did we? Back okay. And then came back to. That's Shake right. Together. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because we ended up leaving the convention together, and we mm-hmm. went directly to Shake Shack. Yeah. 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 Okay. That. Sorry, I was getting mm-hmm. my days mixed up there. So at some point, I must have run back into Dustin. But I, I like basically, it's usually like if I'm leaving the convention, <laughs> I'm leaving either with Amelia or Dustin. I have. I don't think I've ever like come mm-hmm. back like with all of us together, except for like mm-hmm. maybe the the last day. Mm-hmm. so we all split it's uh it's a fun it's a fun time had by had by all um and i basically kind of just like beelined it to artist alley a bit but before mm-hmm. that i was like well i know my friend allison is here um so shout out to allison lewis they're fantastic they were running the idahoan potato booth and i didn't see them the first couple of times i wandered past so mm-hmm. I was like, OK, well, I, I don't want them to think that I'm being a flake. So I was like, I'll, I will try and run into them at some point before I leave the floor. So mm-hmm. I, I basically started walking through Artist Alley and just like looking at stuff. And normally my process is to kind of just window shop on Friday. And then mm-hmm. if there's anything on Saturday, I might kind of try and wander through. But like as Amelia and I will espouse on soon, like Saturday's kind of a shit show. And then, like, if there's anything on Sunday, Sunday is nice because, like, some artists really are just, like, they'll kind of cut you a deal because they're trying not to take a bunch of their shit home. You know, like, they basically have packed suitcases full of, like, charms or posters or art supplies or whatever they're trying to, like, basically sell at the convention. And so they're like, well, I don't want to take all this stuff home. So if I discount it a little bit, then maybe, you know, Mm -hmm. I can take less home. 
which is to always say like pay your artists and don't use AI and like you know tip your artists as well because they deserve it. But at the same time, like if there's something that you're like, well, I'm kind of short on money, but you really want like Sunday might be your best bet to like get mm-hmm. some sort of a deal, I guess. Mm-hmm. So yes, yeah, so I wandered through there a little bit. I went. I, I specifically was was thinking like, oh, okay, well maybe I will look at some of the panels or whatever. And then the, for whatever reason, the app just like refused to load. So I was like, cool, that that takes that that out of my hands. Then I can just wander the floor. So uh, just looked around a lot. I noticed that uh, he wasn't particularly advertised in any main way. But uh, Austin St. John of the, the also known as the original Red Power Ranger was like oh. at the Misty Mountain Gaming booth, which is like a dice booth. Oh. And I was yeah, like, I did not he's know not, that. yeah, I didn't know he was really like a and d guy. I was like, I wonder if they just were like, hey, can you sit at this booth or whatever? Apropos of nothing and totally unrelated, he is uh, he's in a lawsuit with the United States on wire fraud. So <laughs> oh, uh-huh. <laughs> which I think he's which I think he's copying a plea deal for. Um, he also uh, totally unrelated. He also uh, has a warrior line of clothing in which he said, quote unquote, uh, Hitler had some good one liners. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So when somebody uh, came up to me, and again, this is also totally unrelated, when someone came up to me and said, oh, yeah, like the rest of the Power Rangers are here, the rest of the living original Power Rangers are here, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing like David Yost and Amy Jo Johnson, and that's that's good enough for me. <laughs> so I've met the black, black, pink, and blue Power Rangers, and that is going to be the end of that. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. Now, if I can run into Steve Cardin- Cardinius and uh, and uh, oh, I'm blanking on his name right now, uh, Adam. Uh, sh- no, it's not his. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch. There it is. Mm. Johnny Young Bosch and Catherine Hillard. Then cool, because they are the like the second uh, original like original Power Rangers for that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so yeah, so um, basically, I kind of just wandered the floor and. Saw some really, really good cosplays. The the cosplay meta for this year seemed to be Baldur's Gate 3, obviously, because it came out last, like late last, like August of last year. So C2E2 mm-hmm. cycle. Um, mm-hmm. So there were a, there were uh, a good chunk of like Astarians and uh, other uh, and Karlak and other characters from there. Um, and then uh, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy which I didn't know what the meta was for that. I don't know like why that was, but there were probably like three or four mm-hmm. sets of them, mm-hmm. including a couple of like, quote unquote, sexy mermaid band and barnacle boy, mm-hmm. which like, I was like, well, so this one person had, they had like, um, like one of like, I want to call it a morph suit, like basically like those skin tight kind of suits that was kind of like, uh, it wasn't quite flesh colored. It's kind of like mm-hmm. an off, like an off blue and mm-hmm. then they had like the suspenders for Mermaid Man, <laughs> and then they had star pasties on the nipples. <laughs> like, oh my! <laughs> so I was like, I mean, that's a choice. I mean, technically you're not naked, but wow. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so and then the Squirtle Squad. There were tons of people, and it wasn't even like I don't want to say like they weren't good costumes. I mean, like they weren't mm-hmm. elaborate. I want to say they weren't mm-hmm. elaborate costumes. It was mm-hmm. mostly just like a like one of those like onesie kind of things that were very mm-hmm. baggy in the Squirtle like colors, and then they had like the sunglasses. Mm-hmm. But it was really mm-hmm. cute to see like several groups of people running around as a Squirtle Squad. So yeah, it was cute to see them like yeah all together. Um, yeah. I saw a lot of Waldos, which mm. funny. I didn't see a single one. I saw so many. I it, yeah. That that puts You're a lot of perspective. Really good at finding Waldo. Yeah, apparently. I was gonna say that puts a lot of perspective on me because I remember you bringing it up when we were sitting at a table, and I was like thinking, I was like, "Huh, wonder where that came from?" Because I hadn't seen a single one. <laughs> I saw at least five. That's so funny. I also saw at least. Four or five Marty McFlies, which that makes sense. That's a I didn't common see... costume. Yeah, I saw on maybe the one hand, one. and also because Christopher Lloyd was there, and you could get pictures of him with the DeLorean. So I understand wanting to dress like Marty McFly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, after you guys left, I ran into a bunch of Barbies um, that were wearing like the pink, uh, like uh, coveralls from like 
the part of the movie where the Barbies are like brain like on brainwashing the other Barbies. Um and they were really cute. hmm I remember you said you pointing those out, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I well, yeah, I saw a lot of Barbies in general. Like saw the Barbie in a the gingham dress from the beginning. I saw the Barbie in the the outfit when they come back from the real world mm-hmm. with the hat where she like lays down on the ground and like has given up on life. <laughs> I saw weird, at least two or three weird Barbies. I saw Ken in the rollerblading outfit. I don't think he was rollerblading, but in that outfit. I remember you bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a couple other Kens. What else did I see? Oh, I took a picture of Daria. Yes, yes, that Daria that you saw. I did you have you posted those pictures? Because that Daria costume was so lit. I like posted it on a story, but I'm gonna post it on Instagram. Yeah, I saw a woman dressed as Daria and was just like standing by herself next to like a pillar, and I just like went up to her and was like, "Hey, can I take a picture of you?" <laughs> And she was like, you know who I am? And I was like, yeah, you're Daria. And she's like, oh, my God, I love you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, that was that was cool. Um, And her jacket was she had like a green leather jacket. It was so great. Um, What else did I see? I saw lots, but I, you know, it's hard to remember it all. I didn't take very many pictures. Oh, I saw a lot of like really good Disney costumes. There was some like disney um panels and um like storytelling times so some of the costumes mm-hmm. were for that but i saw oh i saw a really good hercules and meg from the disney Ooh, okay movie. but they were too far away to take a picture um there were a lot of bells because the voice of bell and the voice of gaston was there and the voice of the uh just gonna yeah. s- slip in real quick the guy good. that does the voice for um nfl blitz and nba jam was also there he was also at midwest mm-hmm. gaming classic but we happened to be walking by them like as there was a conversation happening about like bucks like the monkey bucks because they were in the playoffs oh, uh-huh. at that point so i was uh-huh. like who interesting mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle of bulls territory but you know it's fine it's fine <laughs> yeah so lots of good cosplay yeah, I kind of dressed up like Jughead on the last day, but my the hat on my head was hot immediately. I yeah, I just like I was saying that I need to think of some cosplays that are like short skirts <laughs> or something because I was so hot in there. <laughs> so yeah because i had brought cosplay for david rose too but again it was like i don't want to put a sweater on this is terrible so yeah i but i'm i want to make an effort for next year yeah i'm already putting a list together um and i'm i'm probably going to lean on you and stuff a little bit to keep me accountable for it uh but we'll we'll talk about that later but yeah, so uh, basically we left the convention. I think I think I ended up meeting up with Dustin because he was like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I am not because of the dopamine is like pretty high levels right now. But my tummy is probably actually like, hey, you will want to eat soon. So you should probably, you know, get to that. Mm-hmm. I was like, cool, you're right. Let's do it. So uh, we left and then we walked right into Shake Shack and the it was kind of sort of busy and <laughs> My favorite part of of that was that uh, one of the guys working behind the counter, I guess he was on like call out duty. Oh, but but he just was like, I don't want to call him lazy, but he just like wasn't into it at all. Like, I feel like that was like they were like, oh, you have to do this. And he's like, I don't want to. And they're like. Marcus get on it. And he was like, fine. So like Mm -hmm. he would go he would walk up to the food and go, "Um, John. John, your order's ready. And then he'd walk away. <laughs> and it's like, this is a loud ass like restaurant yeah. right now. You yeah. gotta, you gotta project, my dude. Cause everybody's just like, like, 
I, yeah. I don't know. Me personally, when I order food and it's like that, I'm just like nearby because I'm hungry. But like right. these people just like we're like, oh, we're just going to sit and chat and chill or whatever. We're in Chicago. This is so fun. We're tourists or whatever. Um, uh. But like he would just walk up and go like, John, your food's ready. And then walk away. And then he'd come back and be like, John, John, your food's ready. Like just slightly louder. And then, <laughs> then one of his few like femme presenting coworkers would come up and go, John, <laughs> John, your food. And he'd go, oh, OK, cool. You know, <laughs> so funny <laughs> and then she like looked at him and was like did you not call his name he's like yeah i called him twice and it's like bitch <laughs> here's my question here's my question about that yeah is he terrible at everything else and that's why they gave him this job because like to me if you're not good at that part you should give it to somebody who is good at that but then is it like that they couldn't put him at fries because he sucks at that too? Or they couldn't put him at beverages because he sucks at that too? And if that's the case, then fire him. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't it. know. Rant over. Good. It's, it good. it's a good ass question. I do not have the answer for you. But it was just so funny. Like Dustin and I were like watching this happen. So I originally was going to order at like their little like console, you know? Mm hmm. But then I was just like, it's being weird, and my order is kind of complicated, so fuck it. So then mm -hmm. uh, I ended up uh, just going and, and going up and, and getting uh, my order ready. And my order came, like, right after Dustin's, which, like, there was a significant gap in time between them. So I was kind of impressed by that. Mm. So then we got our food. We walked in. We saw you. We ate. We, we had a conversation. And then Dustin was like, well, I want ice cream so i'm going back and i was like i guess i'll walk back with you i'll think about getting something i don't even remember if i ended up getting a second thing or if i just like walked with him but i don't, I don't think, think so. so no i think mm -hmm. dustin just went and he got like a float that he was like kind of impressed by i remember what it was i went down and then um i purchased uh what did i get i think i got like a, a coffee drink uh for from the, the like yeah, for the next day, I got a coffee drink from, like, the lobby, and then I got cookies, and then something else. Um, and it ended up costing, like, 30 bucks just for those three things, and I was just like, bruh. Yep. Um, so then, uh, day two, we all, uh, we all elected to kind of sort of go together, but uh, Frank, Nico, and Jackie went to the buffet that's in the hotel. Which, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not going to necessarily name the hotel unless we, uh, at this point, but uh, I just know that, like, I, I don't know. I've never been terribly impressed any time that we've stayed there. Um, it's fine. I've stayed in yeah. way worse, but yeah. it's not amazing either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, it was all right. They, I, I will say that, like, in maybe this is just me being spoiled from previous days, but just like having like a complimentary breakfast kind of thing is, is neat. But I feel like that's not really a thing that happens as much anymore. Um, so their buffet is like 17 bucks or something like that, which isn't mm -hmm. terrible, but like it yeah. adds up, you know, mm -hmm. especially depending on like, uh, depending on how much you uh, end up having for food. Mm -hmm. So um, we all left and then I needed to go back. Cause I forgot the stickers that I like, I, I had set them out. And didn't actually put them in my bag. And I was like, well, I was planning on like handing them out. And I was like, well, I could just not. And I was like, but I did pay a decent amount of money for these stickers. So I should want to do that. Um, so I ended up, uh, y'all ended up waiting for me uh, while I quick tried to run back and, and grab them. And then I grabbed them. And we watched as like some sort of like uh, some Indian, like an Indian wedding was happening, like right in the, right mm -hmm. on Michigan Avenue, like yeah, just a, a block, a block, a block east, I guess, of our of our bus stop, which was fascinating. Uh, so if you don't know, it's like it's a huge cell. Like if you've never seen, it's a huge celebration. It's 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 really a sight to behold. Uh, I was uh, amazed that they were able to get a permit and the cops were there and stuff. And like oh. you could hear the music for like a good three, four blocks in like every direction that was going mm -hmm. on. Um, and I think that was the first time that we saw that family that was like from the South. I think that Dustin said that they were from no, the South. No, you guys oh, wasn't? have seen them on the way home on Friday, I think, or the way oh, okay. back to the hotel on Friday because okay. – when Dustin and I were waiting for you to get the stickers, he was pointing them out to me. And, and they got on. At, oh, yeah. Okay. Telling me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> makes makes sense. So. So, yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about day two? Because we were mostly together the whole time. 
Yeah, so, I mean, day two for me was mainly just, like, wandering around, mainly through Artist Alley, but just through the whole floor. Um, I had purchased two photo ops, well, three, but two photo ops that day for one with two guys from Ted Lasso and one from two guys from One Tree Hill, which I will post on my Instagram and yeah, that was fun. And, but I, yeah, I mainly just wandered around a lot with you, some on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing to do. I don't know. I was going to say nothing too exciting, but it was like all exciting. It's just like, that's mainly all I did. It's just kind of wander around. Mm hmm. So for me, yeah, we, we basically wandered around together. I got, I, so I, when I originally booked, I was like, okay, so I bought photo, a photo op with David Yost and Amy Jo Johnson, as I, as I explained, mm -hmm. who are the pink and blue uh, Power Rangers of the original uh, cast, I guess, of, of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And then I decided like the night before that I was going to be like, okay, well, I want to see if I can get in with the Iconics because I do want to get a photo with them. Mm -hmm. So I originally went down that day in a in my Orange Cassidy cosplay, which like for those of you who don't know, he's a professional wrestler that has a very simple ensemble. It is a oh. pair of ripped jeans, uh, an elbow pad on the right elbow, a white T-shirt and sunglasses and then a jean mm -hmm. jacket for flair. Mm -hmm. um, and my shirt, because <laughs> yeah, my shirt said uh, this is an Orange Cassidy cosplay shirt with a, mm -hmm. with his thumbs up logo below it that I mm -hmm. had Canva print out for me and it turned out really great because I was like it's just so funny I ran into mm -hmm. another person cosplaying as Orange Cassidy it was a femme presenting person mm -hmm. and we did the we did the lazy fist bump which is just like a limp arm just like knuckle touch <laughs> <laughs> so funny um so I ended up getting photos with uh with um the Iconics. I also got a photo with um, Dan Housen, who Steph knows. Uh, he's a professional wrestler, also currently with AEW, but he um, did appear in uh, the Milwaukee promotion of Mondo Lucha a couple of times, and that's where we first saw him. Mm -hmm. I, w I remember, and I don't think, I don't remember if you were with me at the time, Amelia, but like I, I went and got, no, I think you were. You were with me because you were like watching my stuff while I went and got the photo. Um, yeah, I was there. So, yeah. yeah, so it was it was um, Dan Housen in the center and then a wrestler named Ricky Starks, who is like a really cool guy um, mm -hmm. who I like. I just didn't really like I'm not like a huge like a huge Ricky Starks fan. So I was like, I'm not really going to get a photo with him. But um, mm -hmm. and then uh, this wrestler who a couple of my friends know is known as Brody King. And I remember I had the sunglasses on while I was buying the tickets and Brody King was the closest wrestler to the to um, the um, the the booth where you could purchase tickets. And mm -hmm. he was like staring in my direction. <laughs> like, like, is that is that who I think it is? <laughs> it's just so interesting. I couldn't tell if he was just like trying to be like mock intimidating or if he was confused. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, but he was like staring in my direction. I was like, well, I'm not taking these glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. I don't know if he was staring at me, if he was staring at something near me. I don't know. But it was just funny. So so yeah, so I uh I bought the ticket. I got to tell Dan Housen about how much my wife likes him as uh as a wrestler. And mm -hmm. he was very he seemed very encouraged by that. He was I had to tell Steph he was not in character. Um he has a very distinct like character voice and his mm -hmm. last name actually is Dan Housen. Uh mm -hmm. and his bit is that he adds the word Housen to a lot of things. So like mm -hmm. I think I think I told you this, but like he has like mm -hmm. uh he partnered with a coffee brand and the coffee brand is called his his blend is called Coffee Housen. Mm -hmm. I think it's like Dan Housen Coffee Housen or something like that. But but yeah, he was really cool. I got a photo with him on that. He obviously recognized the cosplay and appreciated it because uh, he has teamed mm -hmm. with Orange Cassidy in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Got the photo with the Iconics, and then I was able to uh, basically run to <laughs> to the cosplay booth and swap clothing uh, so that I could appear in my Power my, my Power Rangers tracksuit mm -hmm. that I got, which... I guess to my slight surprise got way more recognition than Orange Cassidy, but it, you know, it's not really like truly a wrestling con. So I'm, I guess I'm not 
terribly surprised mm-hmm. by that. But I also got a photo with that with the Power Rangers, of course. That one was a little bit frustrating just because they were so like, let's move, let's move, let's move, let's move. And I was just mm-hmm. like, I didn't really get an opportunity to like get my mask off. So the photo, uh, mm-hmm. I have my mask on during it and it's it's fine. But and then what else? The, uh, I got to see like a couple of uh, people that I wanted to see that were down there. I got to hang out mm-hmm. with them for a little bit. I met Kate May, who does uh, art for Dimension 20 and a lot of other places. Uh, they are fantastic. And we were, I got to tell them a story about how I almost met Travis McElroy at Gen Con the previous year and come to find out that Kate was in that exact same space as that was mm-hmm. happening. So, like, mm-hmm. I, yeah, so I was like, so I'm telling, funny. Yeah, so I was like telling the story, and they were like, "Wait, you were at Gen Con last year?" And I was like, "Yeah," and they were like, "Oh, me too." And I was like, "That's cr-. like not at all surprising, but kind of cool, you know." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Oh, mm-hmm. like there was this party that I was at, and Travis happened to be there." And then Kate was like, "Wait, this party, like the Maker's party, it had kind of like a barbarian heavy metal theme." And I was like, "Yeah, that's the one." And Kate was like, "Yeah, I was there." Too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so we were basically just like probably just like wandering the same room just like passing each other had yeah. no idea and yeah, i just think so funny i just think that's all that's that's so fascinating like mm-hmm. as to kind of just take a break away from the explanation like i, I maybe I, I know i'm not alone in this but i don't know how truly common it is but just like thinking about like where you are at a certain time and like where people that you know or don't or, or you knew or know are at that exact time, like, you know, like finding out that my friend Samantha was going to be there the whole weekend. I only ran into Samantha once, but like, mm-hmm. just like the serendipity in which it happened is like, I was waiting around to see if I could get a text from her, like when they were coming onto the floor. And then mm-hmm. I was like, well, Dustin wants to leave and I do want to get food. So I kind of stalled a little bit, but I like, if I hadn't stalled, I wouldn't have run into her. Because mm-hmm. as I was like walking off the floor, as I just happened to see her walking on and like mm-hmm. it wasn't even like, a, oh, she's way over there. It was like, no, literally, like we were literally going to cross each other. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, hey, like, um, but mm-hmm. I just think that's so fascinating, like thinking about like, OK, well, like 10 years ago, where was this person that I know now? And like, were we mm-hmm. just like ships in the night, like, you know, yeah. or even a year ago, like where was like. Right. You know, I was like, oh, I know this person. I know they went to Gen Con. Like, I right. could have met them then, you know? Like, you never know. So I just right. find that shit fascinating. Yeah, me too. Yeah, no, when I was asking, like, this is off topic, but also it's part of the weekend, is that, like, I know Dustin, but have only met him briefly before. And so, like knowing that I was going to stay the weekend in this room with you and him, I was like, I don't really know this person, but I also feel like I do know this person because I hear about him so much. And, and then to hear him talk about like something about where he went to high school. And I was like, wait a minute. So did you know your wife in high school? And he's like, no, not at all. Like Mm -hmm. they went to the same school for many years and never crossed paths. And I'm just like, that is insane. Like that's insane. It's so fascinating. (laughs) So, anyway. No, I just, yeah, Um, just, like, think about, like, how you were just, mm -hmm. like, you were just, like, walking the same halls as this person that, like, later in life you would get married to. Like, that's just, it's just so fascinating to me, like, those kinds of things. Life is weird, man. It's in a good way, in those ways. So you find joy where you can, Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So, yeah, so I I did end up doing, like, uh, my friend Allison, who's working at the Idahoan booth, uh, they were like, we're shooting content now if you want to join. And I was nervous about it because, like, I I love the idea of trivia. I think casual trivia situations are very cool to be like, oh, I didn't know that about this thing. But, like, being mm-hmm. put on the spot terrifies me with trivia because I feel like I know nothing. And I led with that. When I walked up, I was like, okay, well, I should do this. Uh, you know, I want to help Allison out because, like, apparently mm-hmm. they just couldn't they couldn't get a lot of people to stop. Which, like, I understand mm-hmm. in some cases because some people are like me. But I was like, all right, I did. And so I'm like, yeah, I don't know next to nothing about like trivia. And so mm-hmm. they were giving me like softball questions. And they're like, and every time I would answer it correctly, they would be like, oh, see, and you say you know nothing about trivia. And I'm like, well, if you say like A, B, C, what's the next letter? Oh, D. <laughs> oh, my God. You, you say you don't know anything about trivia. Like, it's just funny. 
Uh, I'm not I'm not dogging on them at all, but it was just like I felt like I was being given like, you know, training wheels questions a bit. So I was like, OK, yeah, I, I know I know where live long and prosper comes from. It's just like, and I had to like stop mm-hmm. for a second when they said that, because I was like, don't say Star Wars because <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then wrong. like, I, so like <laughs> I got I got every one of the questions correct, more or less, except for the last one, because they were like, OK, well, we're going to show you we're going to ask you a question about anime. And, and they were like, I was like, OK, well, I haven't seen a lot. So and they're like, how about this? How about we show you the photo and then mm-hmm. you, we'll go from there? And I was like, that sounds better, because like if I can I, if I can if I can see the picture, then I might get it. Mm-hmm. So they showed me a picture of this this uh, character from the uh, anime Naruto, which is a very popular anime. Like even someone mm-hmm. like me who's never seen an episode could still pick some of the characters out of a lineup. Mm-hmm. And they were like, OK, what's this character that is obsessed with potatoes named? And for bonus points, what anime is he from? And I was like, well, I can tell you what anime he's from for sure. I do not mm-hmm. know his name. And they're like, yeah. you want to phone a friend? And I was like, I don't really know anyone off the top of my head that watches Naruto like that. I could have mm-hmm. I, I realized now that I could have phoned f- like Frank and Nico and been like, yo, mm-hmm. I need help. But I didn't know that about Frank. And, like, I didn't know that about Frank that he would have known what character it was. So then they were mm-hmm. like, and they're like, do you want to just grab somebody? And so I just happened to see somebody that was like standing nearby. And I was like, hey, you come over. Here. <laughs> so I like brought him over and he's like, I don't know what character that is. What did I lose you? And I'm like, no, you're good. Cause I didn't know either. So I wouldn't have like, I wouldn't have won <laughs> yeah. either way. Um, so I only missed that question. But then they gave me two, two packets of the shredded potatoes which were mm-hmm. Hidden Valley ranch flavored and the triple cheese potatoes. Um, and this is where I, I borrow from Justin McElroy, who the McElroy brothers were also there. I didn't see them, though. So this is a, a mini munch squad in, in our in our podcast. Sorry, Justin, don't sue me, please. Uh, it's it's not munch squad. It's munch squad with an O. <laughs> so it's legally distinct. Munch crew. That's what it is. It's there munch crew. <laughs> legally distinct. Um, so... My review of them, they're both good. If you happen to be shopping and you see the shredded potato snacks, I I recommend them. Um, Mm -hmm. I will say that the Hidden Valley Ranch ones gave me more of a mashed potato feel Mm -hmm. than the cheesy ones. Like the cheesy ones actually felt like, oh, these are shredded potatoes with cheese on them. Mm -hmm. And the Hidden Valley ones just felt like I was like, oh, I'm just eating very chunky mashed potatoes. So like if that's a sensory thing that you care about, I mm-hmm. didn't have a preference. I thought they were both great. Just that that's just like a thing that I, I would give them yeah. both a four out of five is just like if you're not in the mood for like mashed potatoes, then maybe don't do the mm-hmm. Hidden Valley Ranch ones, at least for me. Mm-hmm. And then I have the other two waiting so that Steph can have them because they're gluten free. So there you go. So that is the end of Monch Crew. <laughs> What else happened? I ran into my friends, uh, Chris and Marie. So we walked around for a little bit and bought some stuff. And then we ran into a guy that was dressed as Homelander from the boys. And he had decided to go to like a boat, like a bodega or something nearby. And he bought like a fucking like half gallon of milk and was just carrying Uh it around uh because the character apparently loves milk a lot. And so we were Uh like joking with him a little bit. And he was like, I'll just drink some to get a milk mustache, but it was warm oh. by that point. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, when he said he was going to do that, I was like, A, milk mustaches, like, don't stay. They don't. Yeah, they don't, yeah. And B, like, how long ago did you buy this milk? Because this was, like, early afternoon. And if you got mm. here in the morning, it's been a few hours. And I was like, that's so gross. Oh, it was gross. <laughs> But yeah, Chris was super into it. Um, so apparently that's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, he he was very amused. So he had a lovely photo. And the mm-hmm. thing that stood out to me about that particular experience is that like they were taking the photo together and Chris just like full on grabbed his milk and like like let's get the milk in the shot, like lifted it up and I was like, You can't grab a man's jugs like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, did you say that? I didn't hear I that. Did. I said it real low because I was like, I didn't want to be like too. I I was like not confident in the joke, and then like nobody oh. said anything. I was like, well, that's on me. For, I was like, I'm not going to repeat it, but that's on me for not saying it very loud. I didn't but, hear you. Yeah, that would have been so funny. I wagered none of you heard me because I was like, 
oh, I, I again, I was like not confident in the joke, and then I didn't say it very loud, and like nobody like turned to look, so I was like, okay, well, they didn't mm-hmm. hear me, so that's fine. But again, yeah. that, that's totally on me. But I was pretty proud of that joke mm-hmm. after the fact. I was like, no, that was actually a good fucking joke. You should have. It said was. That that's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, oh. so after that, we kind of separated from them a bit. That's when I got the photo. And then um, you mm-hmm. had a photo that you wanted to take. We did more wandering through Artist Alley. Um, mm-hmm. I got to hand out some stickers. That was cool. I saw the a couple of Carlax. I saw three Carlax, actually, one of which um, entered into the Cosplay Crown competition, mm. which mm-hmm. I thought was really, really cool. I If you are curious... The ones that I did get, like, the usernames and stuff from, they are on my Instagram at a black sparrow. So I did tag them, the two main ones that I saw that, like, were, that, like, stopped and were, like, willing to, like, you know, exchange information. So mm-hmm. I feature I featured them there. Check them both out. They're both fantastic. There's a lot of, like, cosplay adjacent content on their – cosplay and adjacent content, like, on their, on their mm-hmm. uh, Instagram. So uh, very inspiring, honestly. Um Vanta creates and the underscore L word, but it's spelled like E L W U R D. Um, so definitely made me want to like take the time out to make sure that by next year's C2E2, I have like three distinct costumes to go with. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I don't necessarily want to like be a like known for cosplay content, but the, the cosplaying mm-hmm. aspect of things is fun to me. So mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to pause for a sec so you can get some words in. (laughs) Okay. Um, Yeah, I was just trying to think. Yeah, I, like, I I feel like I, I feel like I had, like, a lot of fun doing the photo ops, but at the same time, they're so fast. And, like, that's, that's good in some ways because I'm so anxious about what to say to celebrities. So it's like, I I can't even, I don't have time to really say anything Yeah. in those photo ops. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I think maybe in the future I might put more of that money and time into, like, going up to, like, the autograph lines. Yeah. um, Where you can get selfies with some people. Because Mm -hmm. you get more, you generally get more time with them. I mean, even those lines can get long, and I'm sure it's quick. but. I don't know. It just feels like more. There's at least like, like the something because mm-hmm. like sometimes I mean, the first photo op I've done like that was the Boy Meets World one we did last year. And that right. one was like, like, I remember every moment of that. It, I, I remember it. But like then later in the year, I went to Twin Cities Con and got pictures with like people from like Kevin Smith's universe. Mm-hmm. And those happen so fast that, like, I don't really remember them happening. Yeah. And when I look at the pictures, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I missed the experience. And having this picture doesn't, like, having the picture does make me go like, okay, I guess that really happened. But it mm-hmm. also makes me feel kind of like, but I didn't absorb any of it. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, like, I, I, I'm trying to do better with that. And I feel like the um the first picture i did the one for with ted lasso characters um i remember you saying you weren't thrilled with how it turned out yeah i don't love the picture but i feel like it's sort of like how you don't love the picture of with the power rangers one because you didn't get to take your mask off whereas Mm -hmm. when i look at it or other people look at it we're like it's fine. Like, yeah. it, it kind of works because you're dressed up like the Black Ranger. Like, it sort of works. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And whatever. And so, like, I don't, I don't see it the way you do. Like, you're well, you're more disappointed with it than other people, I think. And that's kind of how I feel about this picture. Because, like, mm-hmm. I was looking down weird because the person was like, the photographer was like yelling at me to tip my yeah. chin down. And like, so then I was like tucking it in too much. And yeah, I think I look really weird, but other people look at the photo and go like, no, it looks like they made you laugh. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well I can go with that. <laughs> yeah. And, and I will say that like, I have been comforted and I think my level of like dissatisfaction with the photo has faded mm-hmm. as a result. But I do agree with you in the sense that like, even though it wasn't a very long time, I did get to actually feel like I interacted with the Iconics 
versus mm-hmm. like with with David and Amy. And I think it was partly because they were running behind schedule. Mm-hmm. They didn't really they were I like I was like, hi. And they didn't really like say much of anything. Mm-hmm. They kind of would just like smiled and like we took the photo mm-hmm. and then like um, and then it was just like, OK, cool. Next person kind of thing. Whereas right. with the Iconics, like they were like, oh, Orange Cassidy, we love it. And then yeah. like uh, like Cassie was like explaining to me like her pose, which I, of course, couldn't mm-hmm. see because I was looking forward at the photographer. And she's like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not wearing she's like, I don't have anything with pockets, but I put my I like put my hands on the side like I had pockets. And I was like, oh, my God, she's so <laughs> fucking cute. I remember trying yeah. to explain to you. I was like, they are like legitimately like not just like the funniest wrestlers they're, they're two of the funniest people that i've ever seen like mm-hmm. in general I love like that. cassie and jesse are incredibly just funny people and i definitely want so badly for them to be on some sort of like 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 whether it be wwe or aew or even t back in tna i want them to be back on my television screen because they're mm-hmm. so funny and mm-hmm. they're so entertaining so i hope maybe after cassie has her baby in a little bit like maybe triple h calls mm-hmm. them up and says come on back we need a tag team i hope that's the <laughs> yeah. case yeah because i want them back and i want them to make more iconics merch so i can buy it in the right size <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah so i i well and i think too like when i was looking at who was gonna be there i was like well, okay, these two guys from Ted Lasso are going to be here, or, like, the two main characters from One Tree Hill are going to be here. Sure, I could go to their autograph lines, but each one costs, like, the same amount as doing a photo op with them together, and, like, that's, then I have a photo with us all, or whatever. But then, because it's so fast, I feel like I would, like, zoom in to the between because all my pictures were with two people, I would, like, get in there between them, and so, like, almost, like, bypassing the first person, like, barely even noticing the first person, because I'm, like, trying to get in there, Mm -hmm. and so I'm looking more at the second person to know when to stop, you know, like, and so then I'm, like, okay, well, I barely even noticed the other person. So like taking a picture together is dumb because like Mm -hmm. I might as well do this in separate lines or whatever. Right. But yeah, it was, it was so nice though, because so the one, one of the guys in Ted Lasso is Phil Dunster and he's British. And um, I walked up and he was like, like, I can't do a British accent. I'm not even going to try. But he was just like, hi how are you and like when i left he was like oh it's so good to meet you have a nice day (laughs) yeah oh sweet um and his character is not like that but and then with the one tree hill photo like as i was leaving it that one was like your power rangers one in that like they were behind so it was just like let's go let's go let's go Mm -hmm. so barely even like none of us really said a word it was just smiling and then as I was leaving I sort of like like not tripped but sort of like my foot hit one of the guy's foot like as I was leaving kind of I remember you telling Um, the story yeah and I'm pretty sure it was my fault I'm pretty sure it was my fault but he was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry and I was like you're adorable (laughs) and then the third picture I got on Sunday was with Freddie Prinze Jr. and Rachel Lee Cook from She's All That, which was, Mm -hmm. I feel like, a very formative movie for me in middle school. Freddie Prinze Jr. was maybe one of my first celebrity crushes. (laughs) So I was, like, nervous about it. Mm -hmm. But, and they were also kind of, like, moving you through pretty quickly. But when I got up there and into position... Or as I was walking up there to get in position, Freddie Prince Jr. like kind of stepped away and was like, give me a minute and like went to take a sip of water and like, yeah, I think put some hand sanitizer on. And so I had like, I don't know, probably a whole minute just standing there with Rachel Lee Cook. And I was like, hi. (laughs) (laughs) But I knew that she's from Minneapolis. So I was like, and I. And I think later, I didn't think of this at the time, but later I was like, I'm so glad I remembered that and said something 
because I'm sure everybody's like, oh my God, I love She's All That. Oh my God, I love Josie and the Pussycats. Oh my God, I love this and that and the other and whatever. But instead, I come up to her and I'm like, oh, hey, I'm from the Twin Cities too. And she's like, oh my God, that's awesome. And like, yeah, how long have you lived there? And like, you know, always happy to meet another Minnesotan. And it was so cute to have like an actual moment. Um, But yeah, I feel like she was into it. Like, not just our conversation. I mean, like, the whole thing. Like, taking pictures yeah. with people. Like, her smile felt genuine. Her interest felt genuine. Her arm, like, kind of half around you or whatever. Whereas, like, I I want to know who talked Freddie Prince Jr. into coming to this. Because I don't feel like he was... <laughs> I don't feel like he was that into it. Like, I feel like... I feel like he didn't hate it. But, like... He kind of kept his hands, like, behind his back. He didn't really, like, touch you um, or anything, which is fine. I get it. It just, like, it felt a little bit, like, forced. Whereas, like, everybody Mm -hmm. else, it felt like they were happy to do this. Yeah. They were excited to meet all these people, um, even if it was for five seconds or whatever. So... Uh, but whatever, I have a picture with my junior high crush, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> Love it. But yeah, other than those three pictures, I mainly just wandered around the whole time. Bought a bunch of stuff, bought a lot of stickers and buttons and some artwork. And I'm going to post some of it. I don't even remember what all I got. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I it was just really fun and I love seeing all the artwork. I didn't go to any panels this year. There were a few I kind of wanted to go to, but just like timing wise didn't work out so well. And I just, I feel like I will have a, like a little bit of a different strategy for next time. If sure. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how I feel about it too. And I know that like, I, um, like for Gen Con, I had no idea and I think I just decided to go so late that I was just like, well, I'm just going to have to freaking just play it by a year. And I ended up meeting mm-hmm. some really great people and hanging out with them for the most part. But like, mm-hmm. I'm, I think I'm going to try this year to see like as soon as things kind of open up and they may have already done so like to try and see if I can get into some panels and stuff. Cause it's like, I can only wander, wander around in Gen Con so much, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like this wasn't my first year at C2E2, but last year I went and Steph came for part of it. And so mm-hmm. she and I spent time together. And so I didn't spend as much time at the convention as I did this year. Because it wasn't like the only thing I was doing that weekend, I, I guess. is. Um, and so like, I knew what I was going into this year more so than last year. But like, this was the first time I did like multiple days for like a long period of time like Mm -hmm. all day yeah and so just my strategy would be different around like what to do when to go um snacks i don't want to bring more snacks (laughs) but it still had like no that, that that's not to say that i didn't have a good time at all i had a great time it was so fun um and yeah but for me i think the most adventurous part of the whole weekend was my trip home Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i was gonna say sunday sunday was kind of like just a like a redux of of saturday a bit just because it was mm -hmm. like we thought from our previous year 2023 like saturday was like insane in terms of people because like you know people tend to just a lot of people that are local tend to go on saturday only and they experience Mm -hmm. everything they want to experience and it's it's generally the busiest day and then sunday feels like okay well most of those people have kind of gone home or whatever so like it's Mm -hmm. a bit more chill uh but this year it was like oh okay uh no it was kind of at least initially the first pass through that we we did was just as busy I think yeah, Saturday Sunday was still really busy, and like it was like you were talking about earlier. That like sometimes on Sundays people put stuff on sale. I didn't see any of that. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything marked down. If if I had stopped at a booth, maybe it, oh, 
or ha- had stopped at some more booths, maybe I would have seen more of that, but I didn't really see a lot of that. So I was like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so, uh, I will, I will point this out cause I was thinking about this and I never told it to you. So you remember mm-hmm. on Sunday when we walked in and there was that booth that had like the cool kind of like fruit bowl kind of a thing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, after I said goodbye to you, cause like you had other stuff to do and we were like trying not to stay too long. So Amelia's flight was mm-hmm. like later in the day. So we ended up leaving like maybe like around like one or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I went to, I went back to go see if I could spot it and it was like, it was gone. It was gone. Yeah. I went back for it too. Okay. At, lunch, <laughs> That's so at funny. lunchtime. Yeah. It was yeah, like something. I thought, I thought like, I thought that there was something next to it with like salads too, it seemed like, but maybe I was imagining it or maybe it wasn't what I thought it was. But so I think it was just there for like, quote unquote, breakfast. Like, which I was like, no, it sounded so great. Like at the time I was ready to leave, I was like, I could, I'll eat this on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Well, because that's the thing is that most of the food there is like, it was like pizza and hot dogs and barbecue. And th- that's fine. But the but lines like, are crazy long to start. But like the lines are crazy long. And by Sunday I was like, okay. I don't I'm want any of this. Really, yeah. Well, I'm also like, I'm 38 years old, dude. I need a fucking vegetable. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need some fruit, man. Like, I can't. Because it was just like, yeah. By that point, I was like, I, I can't do this. I can't eat junk food for multiple days the way I used to be able to. <laughs> and I swear, somebody would make a killing in there if they just, like, yeah, if that smoothie stand stayed all day, I swear they would make a killing. Mm-hmm. As but, long as it's not like Jamba Juice level, because like I love, I love a Jamba Juice, but like sometimes it's like y'all, y'all got too much sugar in this, homie. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like no, there's a place that that's near like us. It was like legit. Yeah, yeah. There's a place that's near us that like it's a local, it's a local place, and their smoothie bowls are just so freaking good and i don't feel like like even for me who you know like me i'm i'm a, a man with a sweet tooth so like mm-hmm. this bitch this bitch loves some sugar but like mm-hmm. i was like well i i mean i'm buying this smoothie bowl because i want to eat a bunch of fruit and please yeah. don't dump extra sugar in it i'll just so like the the place that we go yeah. now doesn't have that so like mm-hmm. I, it, it generally is feels in fact i'm gonna look up and see if they're open today i'm kind of <laughs> kind of feeling it a little bit anyway go on yeah i mean i don't really have much else to say about the convention itself um other than like yeah i think i left on sunday at like i don't know like 1 1 30 mm-hmm. my flight was supposed to be at 5 40 okay so i was like i kind of want to get there like three between three thirty and four mm-hmm. um they stay two hours yeah i stay one and a half <laughs> usually <laughs> enough depending on if i want to like get food or something at, at the airport which i understand food at the airport is expensive but i like convenience okay so but i was just kind of done with c2e2 and done with people and so i was like i'll just go early like put my put my noise canceling headphones on listen to my audiobook and just like find a corner in in the airport yeah because i'll be there a little bit longer than Mm -hmm. i need to so Right around the time we were going to start boarding, I realized, oh, the flight has been pushed back. Not a lot, just a little, like 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. no big deal. Then it got pushed back to seven. Then it got pushed back to nine. And at seven, like when we were told it got pushed back to seven p.m., we were told, there was a mechanical issue, they were working on it, and that another flight, like, they, yeah, they were, there was a mechanical issue and they were working on it. And then when it got pushed back to nine, I think, is when they said, 
okay, so we pushed it back to nine. And basically this was at like 7.15. So I feel like it was like, we pushed it back to nine because now it's past the point when we said it was going to go. Sure. And so we have to update you somehow. But we don't actually have a real update for you. So we're just going to say, okay, well, we pushed the flight to nine o'clock. But then they were like, but another flight is coming in at 9.50 from Minneapolis. And well, if we can find a crew to fly that plane back, we'll probably do that instead of use this plane that is being worked on right now. Mm -hmm. because the mechanic working on it said it doesn't look good yeah i really want to get on a plane where a mechanic says it doesn't look good except i think he was talking about getting out by Mm -hmm. nine o'clock not yeah the plane didn't look good but still still, still, yeah yeah it was just like okay thank you um so it was like okay well so most likely this plane will come in at 9 50 we'll be We'll get on and go at like 1030 is what they said. Okay, so then that plane does come in. Mm -hmm. But before that plane came in, it got pushed back again to 11. Okay. Because I think that flight was a little behind as well. So it was like, okay. And then at around 10 p.m., when that flight was about to land, we all get a notification that says your flight has been delayed to 8.30 a.m. Mm-hmm. The next and I day. Went, the next day. Well, yeah, it's 10 p.m., so 8.30, yeah, 10 hours from now. Just want to make sure for the people that, that are kind of, you yeah. know, they may zone out a little bit. Just, yeah. just know um, it's an overnight. And the, the just, the just ripple uh, of the wave of people under their breath going, are you fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And like, I was mad too. Like in that moment, I had that moment too. And then I just started laughing. I just started laughing. Mm -hmm. And like people around me were looking at me like the fuck. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like I just, this isn't funny, but it is like, I can't not, I'm just so exhausted i just i don't know anymore but by this point that most of the airport had closed down or the the terminal i was in was pretty small and had mostly shut down so there was like literally nobody to talk to right like i could not find a delta employee to talk to other than there was a flight crew sitting there at our gate who i think was supposed to fly that plane Mm -hmm. who was talking to people and was like I'm sorry, guys, this really sucks. Like, and I think for them too, it was like, we didn't need to sit here. Like, we also are, you know, whatever. But after about 20 minutes, I got an email and a text from Delta that was like, we have provided you with a hotel voucher. Click here. And I did. And then it gave me a list of hotels. And all I had to do was like pick one. And it was like, your reservation has been confirmed. Like it was so slick. Mm -hmm. And so then I looked and they, I'm pretty sure all of the hotel choices had a shuttle, which is smart. And I had to call because the terminal I was at isn't like it's small. So they don't always have to stop there. So Mm -hmm. you have to call to ask for the shuttle to stop. (laughs) And I called and I was like, yeah, like, I'm going to need a shuttle. And they were like, oh, no problem. The one, the next one coming through will stop there at about 10.50. And by this point, it was like 10.30 or past. So it was like not super long. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like walking out. And to do so, you have to walk by a baggage claim. And thank God I was paying attention because there was one baggage carousel that was moving yeah and there was my bag just right there just like but i never got any indication that we would get our bags back Mm -hmm. so like it's only because i like he was paying attention and was looking around like i guess maybe it's that baggage claim because like on the delta app they like 
track your bag. But mine, all mine said was taken off the plane at 6 p.m. So like when That's the flight got so delayed, wild. they took it off the plane. So that was all it said. And so I was like, well, I guess maybe I don't get my bag back, which like that, that, that and the fact that I had been in the airport for like eight hours, those were the things I was pissed about. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, okay, so I'm going to go sleep in a hotel in my jeans. Like I, what? I, I don't have toothpaste. Like I don't have anything like, right. But thank God I got my bag. Like, and, and yeah, just the fact that I've been sitting in the airport that long because it's, it's so, air, airports are so weird. They're just like this other dimension. Yeah. And to me, it's like, I understand why they didn't know it was going to turn out this way, but I wish they had known because I was like, I would have been totally fine if at 530 they were like, I'm sorry, this isn't. This, your flight is canceled. We're rebooking you for tomorrow. Here's the hotel. I would have been like, awesome. Totally fine. You know, but like, I didn't have anywhere to be. I had taken the next day off. Yes, I needed to get home and feed my cats, but like, they would be fine for another few hours because, like, yeah. they have automatic feeders. So, like, mm -hmm. it's just after a couple of days, usually it needs a top up. The water does too. So, like, I needed to get back eventually, but it wasn't that right. big of a deal. Still, though. Whereas, like, other people, I'm sure, like, had to relieve a babysitter or grandma or, you know, like, had to go to work the next day or, you know, like, it was way more complicated for them. And so I was just trying to really be like, okay, I'm safe. I'm fine. Like, mm -hmm. I'm annoyed, but it's not the end of the world. Right. And I got a fucking king bed suite, so you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I I think my favorite part about the story, uh, you know, obviously, is is that part because you were just mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm gonna make them pay. I'm gonna pick the most expensive one. Fuck y'all, like. Yep. And I'm gonna get to well, it was the sleep one on top. Comfort. First of all, it was the one on the top of the list. But me being me, mm -hmm. I scrolled the whole list because yeah. I'm curious like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean. And I think a lot of us did because there was like, there was a good 10 people on that shuttle from my flight mm -hmm. um, staying in that hotel. So I think we all picked the nicest one. Yeah. And I got into the room and I was like, um, this is a king bed suite. So I'm just going to stay here. Okay. Bye. <laughs> yeah. But still like the, the fact that you were, you were able to pick like a very expensive one and they didn't like give you any grief about it. Not that they had any room to do so, but like. No, Fav I mean, favorite part of us, it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, got, well, and then that was the thing too is that mm -hmm. like when checking on the flight, it was like, or here are alternatives. Like we rebooked you for this eight thirty, but here are alternatives. And I was like, ooh, alternatives. Because then in my head, I was like, okay, I have to take this shuttle, get to the hotel, check in. Which because a bunch of us picked the same place, we had to wait in line. Which mm -hmm. The hotel had four people working at the desk. Yeah. So that I was also impressed by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 11 p.m., they had four people working at the desk and had very little notice to know that a bunch of people were coming from the airport. So shout out Sheraton. And uh, uh, yeah. So by the time I like got to the room and got settled down and all that it was almost one in the morning by the time I actually like turn off the light and try to go to sleep right um and so when I was looking at the light I was like oh god 8 30 that means I gotta get there by like 6 30 which means I gotta get the shuttle at like 6 which means I have to get up at like 5 something mm -hmm. and I was like as much as I just want to get home I'm also fucking exhausted right yeah so i looked at the alternatives and there was a flight at noon and i was like okay i can sleep in leave the hotel at like 10 30 <laughs> and that was great because i was also like yeah you're giving me this free hotel i'm gonna stay here as long as i possibly can <laughs> um but yeah it all ended up fine it just yeah it was just annoying but 
again, as my mom says, like, I'd rather not be put on a plane that doesn't work. So yeah, that too, that too. And that's, that's a big thing to con- to consider now with flying, especially with the Boeing stuff. Like, I don't want to get into mm-hmm. it too deeply because I got a couple mm-hmm. of flights that I need to book the rest of the year. So <laughs> to what well, them- <laughs> even, even with what's going on with at Boeing, which you mm-hmm. can look it up. Yep. The odds of dying in a flight, dying while flying, or getting in a in a plane crash is still way lower than getting in a car accident. For sure. So, but still, you know. So hopefully you take that as a flying is not that dangerous rather than okay, I'm never getting in a car again. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that was my experience. Um, and oh, the, I'm just gonna give one caveat is that while I was at the airport waiting for that flight on Monday morning, I got a text from my boss who was like, Are you okay? and I was like, How does she know about the flight? and I just answered, like, Yeah, I'm fine, why? and she's like, Are you in the office? and I was like, No, I took today off, and she's like, Oh, I remember talking about that, but I didn't remember which day. Oh my god. You're gosh. the boss. You need to keep track of that, not me. Like Oh my gosh, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, and then I said something about like good thing I took the day off because this happened and she's like Yeah. And, and then I said something about like but if you really need something, like I can try to do it and she was like, "Okay, thanks." I was like, "Fuck you too." Um, <laughs> but then when I'm with her in person, she was like like how was your weekend you were traveling and I like talked to her and she's like oh my god that sucks so it's like I don't think it's that a I don't really think it's a she doesn't care or she doesn't treat you like a human problem I think it's more of like in the moment and the texting thing like I think she's just very short through text because that's kind of how yeah everything is with messages mm. with her but but it's still at the time I was like Fuck you. <laughs> but yeah, overall, very good weekend. I will post pictures. You can see those at Shake Meets World. Um, you can find Sherrick at A Black Sparrow. That you can. So. Uh, and you can find me a theme song for it because it's the return of Amelia. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Uh, I did not uh, give you a choice this week, and I have I was saving this one for. I'll be honest, I was saving this one for a particular occasion, but I considered uh, considering what it is. I was like, no, actually, this is probably a pretty good occasion for it. So uh, there is no sound, so enjoy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, bitch. <laughs> Nobody wins a push-up contest like Gaston. <laughs> uh, so it, yeah, it's this is a I'm assuming at a Disney park. That's what I assumed as well. Yeah, a, a gentleman dressed as Gaston and uh, another person. And it appears they're in a push-up contest, and at one point, Gaston picks one arm up so that he's only using one arm to do the push-ups, and kind of just yep. smiles at the other guy like, uh-huh, and the other guy's like, tries it, and like, can't do it at all. <laughs> he's he's much slower at it than Gaston yeah, is he, if he, he is doing it. he can kind of do it, but his form is terrible, and yeah, it's bad. And it's just like the look of disbelief that you can't quite see when Gaston just starts yeah. doing it one arm and is like, come on, bro. I, I can do this come all day. Come on, motherfucker. What do you got? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so funny. Oh, my God. Anyway, I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> so oh. I was I was saving that one for a possible next time with... Uh, with one of our cosplay friends, but I was like, you know what? We just had a weekend of cosplay. So let's, let's go ahead and throw that one in there right now. I love it. So, yeah. So that is, um, more or less than, uh, what I've got for you this week. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. 
Mm-hmm. Like Amelia said, you can find us in those specific places. Uh, by the time that you're hearing this, we will be on the last episode of the Spelljammer thing over at Fay Wild and Out. So check that out. Um, and we hopefully will be doing a season two of that because it has been asked for, which I think is really encouraging. Um, yeah, that's whenever, awesome. whenever people, not only people on the outside, but pe- when people on the inside are like, this is so much fun. I would love to do a season two of this. Um, mm-hmm. So I want to promise anything, but like, it's definitely something that we're considering is doing a season two of that, but hopefully mm-hmm. more Faye Wild and Out programming to come. Mm-hmm. I'll be hopefully doing a lot of, um, of seeing some people at Gen Con in August. And then I'm hoping to go to PAX the, at the end of the month. And then I'm hoping to hit TwitchCon at the end of the following month. So like, and like basically like end of September. So it'll be mm-hmm. or middle of September rather. So it'll be kind of a busy, you know, August through September for me, hopefully, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, is it, I, it's weird that like, I feel this sense of like, well, now I want to go all these places, you know, like <laughs> just I want to get on a I want like even though like and I'm knocking on wood, like you're the second person that I know in the last like year that has had like a not great experience with flights, like as far as like them mm-hmm. just kind of fucking it up. Like, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily like I, I'm not excited for that part, but it's like, I well, I do want to mm-hmm. be able to just like go and travel and stuff. And and it mm-hmm. kind of not to like minnesota slash wisconsin goodbye this but like it kind of has been interesting to me with like my boss going on like a three week long trip and then my uh one of my coworkers going on like a week long trip and i'm kind of going like mm-hmm. well i should take advantage of that while i'm at this place where they're okay with that kind of a situation just yeah. go somewhere for a couple of weeks like yeah especially considering like i have always kind of been the person that like doesn't really fly or go take a vacation because i feel like i'm quote unquote not allowed to but that's mm-hmm. neither here nor there but yeah, I will so, say, studies yeah. show, mm-hmm. studies show that eight days is like the perfect length for a vacation. Sure, I'm now, not trying. Obviously, to, yeah. everybody's different. Yeah, I'm just, not trying to go away for three weeks. I feel like that would fuck me up too much yeah. when I got home. But right, well, and also like I love that idea too of like let's go for somewhere for like two weeks or a month or whatever. And then part of me is like, okay, but that's that's expensive. That's like a long time to be not home (laughs) Mm -hmm. but yeah i read recently something about like the the returns diminish significantly after about eight days yeah so Uh, anyway all right well i guess we ran a little long Yep, sorry if we hit the limit on your voicemail again. Next week, we'll talk about how if you're out of podcasts, we'll teach you how to eavesdrop on other people's conversations. Bye! (laughs) (laughs) Bye!